the reason I moved away from the computers and tablets and smartphones and all that, they say if you uh, do what you love, then you'll never have to work another day in your life. And I think that holds somewhat true in making videos for YouTube. Uh, Boomer Consumer here, and I thought I would just kind of talk to you about why I went in this direction of talking about uh, hi-fi gear audio, and eventually I'll be incorporating some music stuff into it as well, obviously, right? And the reason for that is that I've been covering tech for, oh, since 2008, 2009 on YouTube, a long time. And over the last few years, a lot of what's been coming out on the market is just not that exciting to me, to be honest with you. Um, i just not seen a lot of real innovation out there. And some of you may disagree with me, but there's just not a lot of stuff to get excited about. And when you start losing passion uh, for something, it shows. It shows in your body of work. It, it shows in your videos. And I don't want to be making videos just for the sake of making videos. So I took this kind of mental inventory and said, what, what, am, what am I really passionate about at this stage of my life? And that led me to one thing, which is music and the reproduction of music that can be done by the average person at an affordable price. I'm not saying that current technology isn't interesting or uh, not worth covering. There's just so many technology YouTubers out there, many who does it better than I, but I'm just not that excited about what's going on in the tech space. Does that mean that I'll never review a computer or laptop or something? No, no, of course. If there's something that I find interesting that I want to share with you, my viewers, then absolutely. But my real true passion has been, since I was a kid, hi-fi. Uh, going back in the time, so when I was 14 years old, I bought my first system, if you will. And I mowed yards and washed cars and did all kinds of stuff to get the money to buy this used quad system. I don't know if any of you remember a quad or heard a quad, but essentially it was a four-channel system that never really took off. And, of course, I had to have a record. And the very first record I ever bought was um, it was Bachman Turner Overdrive's Not Fragile album. And I got into music in a big, big way. And I just kept on going. I started upgrading systems and, you know, started uh, looking at the hi-fi magazines. Those were a thing. Went And, and of course, every small town, even the smallest towns, had somebody that sold hi-fi equipment, generally, and I would spend just hours in those shops listening to different speakers, looking at different receivers and integrated amps. And um, back then, of course, there were reel-to-reel -reel tape decks. There was uh, cassette decks. And I was just in my environment. And I had friends who were musicians. Um, and it was just a wonderful time in my life. And always learning about new music, different kinds of music. And it was just so important to me back then. And it still is today. Music, I think, gives you something that most technology really can't give you. It can give you a sense of peace, of joy. Um, it can bring back memories. It can relax you. It can excite you. It can get you on your feet in ways that, as far as I know, no tablet, no mouse, no keyboard, no camera could ever possibly do. And getting this wonderful music and hearing it at its absolute best, given the budget that many of us have to live with, that is kind of a passion of mine. And, you know, in, in the days when uh, I was a young man, there were brands that brought affordable gear to the masses, companies such as Pioneer, which I'm a huge Pioneer fan, JVC, uh, Sony was around, Akai, Hitachi, I could go on, Sansui, just uh, many more. And of course, there was a high-end range, companies like Carver, Nakamichi, um, 
just to name a few. I think Krell was even around back then. I'm not sure. Um, Infinity. But those were out of my price range. And they were out of the price range of most other people. But these other companies provided gear at a reasonable price that many of us really, really enjoyed. I also was a big fan of Radio Shack and their realistic brand of stuff. I bought all kinds of doodads and gadgets for my system from Radio Shack. It was a watt meter, a graphics equalizer. I bought their Optimus uh, speakers, and they were wonderful. As I got a little bit older, I gravitated more and more towards Pioneer and for speakers, Bose. Yes, I own the Bose 901s. I'm eventually going to make a video talking about my experience with them. Uh, to me, they were magical. Uh, most uh, audiophiles hate Bose and they hated the 901s. But to me, it was just pure magic listening to those. Uh, it opened up a whole new world. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I listened to Bose. I loved Bose 901s. And the magazines <laughs> uh, were phenomenal back then. High Fidelity, Stereo Review, just to name two that I was super excited about. And I kept up with Hi-Fi until I started having a family. And the budget just wouldn't permit buying any more gear or investing in records and cassettes, etc. Just didn't have the money for that stuff. And time kind of went on. And I, I still had a system. And then I put my real last system together back in, uh, I want to say around 1990, yeah, around 1990, 1991, somewhere around there. And I bought a big uh, Pioneer receiver. And uh, I bought the Bose 901s. And it was wonderful. Uh, but ultimately, um, life got in the way, and I ended up selling all this stuff, and me and my wife ended up moving to Arizona, and I just started a, a new adventure in life. And from then on, I just didn't really have any hi-fi gear. I longed to own a good system, but I just never got around to it. Well, all that has changed, and I decided rather than buying everything new, that I would track down the kind of the system that I really, truly wanted when I was a kid. So I invested in vintage gear. And that's the subject of a whole nother video. But I put together a Pioneer uh, system from around 1980, all Flores scan. Uh, to me, it's just, to me, audio equipment not only has to sound good, but I think it should look good. And I don't know about some of you folks, but I'm just so tired of just the black plastic stuff that is for sale out on the market. I think that there should be uh, a beauty to the gear as well as, of course, the sound. And the beauty of uh, vintage, provided you get a decent deal on it, is you can get really great equipment, repairable equipment, at a decent price. And I put a collection together off of eBay. Unfortunately, I don't really live near a town large enough where I could run across uh, vintage gear at auctions or garage sales or pawn shops, etc. Uh, just, just simply not options. So most of what I have to, most of my gear I have to get off of eBay. But I'm very trying to be very, very careful about it. Now the approach I took to technology uh, is one where I tried to find affordable stuff, good stuff, but affordable. And I'm taking that approach again with uh, audio gear. I'm not trying to copy anybody. I'm trying to do my own thing here. Uh, and I will be reviewing bookshelf speakers, quality DACs that don't cost a thousand bucks. I'll be looking at all kinds of headphones, etc. But more for people that really want great sound at the best possible price. And that's kind of where my channel is going to be focused going forward. So whether it's amps, speakers, DACs, receivers, uh, etc. That's what I want to focus on. It gives me joy because of the music that it produces. And to me, it's all about the music and the gear to get you there and do it in a same price range. I mean, it's very easy, well, easier to hopefully get great sound out of high-end gear. 
but you can also get fabulous sound out of inexpensive gear and inexpensive systems. And that's kind of where I want to be in this space. I don't have millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars to go out and buy all this stuff and review it for people. And I'll be, I'm reaching out to companies right now um, in order to get review units. And I promise you, I will give you an honest opinion. I'm not going to get into the whole spec and the measurement thing because you know what? There is speakers out there. There is amplifiers out there uh, that have great numbers when it comes to measurements, but they don't always sound that good. You can have something that measures perfectly fine and it just doesn't sound that good. I'm more of a subjective kind of guy. My stuff is opinion. And, I, and, the, and the sad reality is that most hi-fi shops are long gone. And now people are turning to resources such as YouTube to get opinions on a particular speaker or amplifier, etc. or DAC. And because they can't go somewhere and easily audition this stuff before they bring it at home. And so I hope to do that for you going forward. The reason I moved away from the computers and tablets and smartphones and all that, you know, I'm just not finding a lot of joy in that stuff anymore. It, it doesn't bring that satisfaction in sitting down to a good piece of music and really appreciating that and the feelings and the vibes that I get from it. it, it you just can't do that, in my opinion, with any tablet, phone, you just don't get that. And that's what it's all about. Something that brings joy to people. And hopefully my uh, upcoming videos will do that for you. That's it. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.